good because he comes from humble beginnings. And so he's always trying to, you know, show that he's got a certain, you know, level of sophistication that he's trying to kind of make up for. So his beast also kind of is a, you know, wants to look a certain way. More intimidating. No pressure, Evan. The music has started. We're 20 seconds into the Facebook Live. For those that don't know, it's how we start it. <laughs> yep. We're getting excited. We're getting loose. End of the week. Easy to watch as you finish up your day. Let's be honest. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. 4 o'clock Eastern. No one's working right now. Um, I don't even care. If, I don't even care if you're uh, Pacific Coast. You're probably not working right now. It's Friday. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this week's uh, Tales of Bastunia Beast Creation, Calling Catalog, Book of Beasts New Entry. Uh, I'm your host, Dylan. Uh, as always, I'm here with Evan. Let me hear it. Hi. Oh, as always, Evan brings his charisma and his creativity. And we have a new Matt with us today. So uh, Matt Emery co-creator of Tales of Bastunia, is not with us uh, today. I'll explain why in a second. Hello, all that are coming here. So excited for you to be here. So excited for the hand waves. Thanks for joining. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Where the heck are you in the world? I'm going to do my best not to swear. Um, but like I was saying, we have a new Matt, Matt Seitz, new member of our creative team, in unfound adventures if you want to know what that means ask us questions in the comments but first and foremost matt thanks for coming today well thanks for having me excited to be here and yeah. uh do this with you this very awesome. very excited to have you we have people from tennessee i don't see names as they come through so whoever's from tennessee super happy to have you look i can put you right on the screen tennessee is here um, in this Facebook Live, what we do is you can ask us anything of the creative process. Often we get questions for Evan of like, where does he get his inspiration to come up with these amazing beasts? Um, now we're starting to build our creative team. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask us. Michigan, just same as me in the mitten. I'm right here. If you have any questions about the creative process, if you have any questions about where in the world is this book going that I'm reading, if you read the second book in Tales of Bastunia, you have questions about the book or questions about what comes next. Ask away. Um, we're super happy to answer everything, even if we give away some spoilers. The whole concept about doing these Facebook Lives is we want to have a different view in the world that we're creating where you're you're in on it. So once this does get big, which it will inevitably become big, <laughs> you know where it's going. You feel like you're on the inside. So we are collaborating um, with you all as we create this. Um, that's everything for me, Evan, anything you want to add, anything been going up? You're on paternity leave right now, correct? I, I am. Yes. Ooh, and it, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Did not come at uh, a moment too soon. Uh, I was definitely getting very, very crispy. So, um, this is nice and it's nice to be able to focus more on projects like this instead of the, the usual daily grind, not to completely bad mouth my actual income stream but you know um it's nice to have a break it's nice to be able to step away it's nice to be able to spend that time on the kids uh and um hope that they appreciate it one day which they probably won't let's be real um <laughs> and Tom, if you're watching i appreciate you and sort of figure figure out my way and figure <laughs> out what's what's going to come next i'm excited man and uh so for those that don't know it's a delayed paternity leave so you had your second child like a few months back now right yeah, about five months ago now. Mm. Smart move with delayed paternity so, leave. Oh, yeah. I, we, I can, we stack I can whatever see, leave we can get. I can see the advantage of that for sure. Wow. We ha okay. we have a lot we have a lot of new ha new happenings in uh, Unfound Adventure. So you having your first child now on paternity leave. Uh, me having my first child taking paternity leave. He is now twelve months old, nineteen pounds, huge baby. And uh, 12, yeah. 12 months old, 12, 12 weeks old. I'm 12 weeks, weeks old. old, 12 weeks old. old. Yeah, okay, 20 pounds, 20, almost 20 pounds, man. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, this next one is for anyone watching that knows our co creator Matt Emery. I did ask him this question, he did give me 
uh, the green light twice because I doubled down. Matt is not here because he has recently got engaged as of this morning. So huge congratulations to that man for the people that are watching. He's like, yeah, we don't have hundreds of people watching this yet. You can tell our loyal followers. So uh, huge congratulations to Matt Emery, who got engaged today to the love of his life. Congratulations to Matt and Bella. That's awesome. Congratulations, Matt and Bella. I texted him and I was like, so you're not going to be there. I was like, wait, are you are you in Michigan at a certain lake? Because he said he was going to be <clears throat> proposing there. So I was like, I don't maybe he is. I don't know. Yeah. But we have a congratulations. It just says Facebook user. I wish we had your name. Matt. Congratulations. Evan, any words of wisdom to Matt getting ready to take the next uh, on, step on, in his on life? engagement on marriage? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I've, I've been with my wife since we were 17. So I, I don't, I, <laughs> I, I'm hardly an authority on what real world relationships look like. That's great. That's exactly what I expected from you, Evan. Thank you so much. And today we're going to dive into it. Today we are going to get to know Matt, who we will, Matt Sites. You also saw he came in as Cuthbert. When we have too many Matts, we give oh. the second Matt a different name. So hold Stay on. Story of my life. I'm I'm <sighs> often the second Matt, not the first Matt. So I always get no. some kind of weird name. Cuthbert comes Cuthbert. from a Cuthbert comes from a joint book that uh, Matt Seitz and I used to read together, uh, a Dark Tower series by Stephen King. For those that have uh, read it, it's amazing. For those that haven't, it's amazing. Go read it today. What we're going to do is we're actually going to be more interviewing Matt because we're starting to open this world of creativity up um, to other people that want to join. Matt's adding novels to this. We have someone that we'll be introducing to the team that wants to start uh, doing podcasts for us and actually reading some of the chapters of our stories. He's training to become a voice actor. So he said it'd be really cool if he takes up our podcasts and slowly... Um, slowly build that following. And then we have a potential children's book coming down the pipeline. So we're expanding our creative world. We're doing that first step today here with Matt Seitz. And um, we're also creating his beast, whose name is? Trigar. Trigar. And we'll be talking about his series of books, pirate themed uh, for the world of unfound adventure. So if you're just joining us, let us know where you're coming from. We got Michigan. We got Tennessee. We got people that love this for Matt Sites. Go ahead, show that here. Um, so let's dive in. Evan will be making this beast in the background. Uh, what we know about this beast is it is part shark, part feline. Um, and the word that you really use to describe it, Matt, is um, predator, correct? Because this belongs yeah. to a pirate. Yep. <clears throat> My man. So Evan, no pressure. Uh, Matt has filled out our worksheet, our beast creation worksheet, um, which if you would like it, feel free to throw it in the comments. Say, I would love that worksheet and we will send you um, a free document that you can go to ask you some thought provoking questions. So Matt has filled that out, sent it to us. We sent all that to Evan and he's taking all that today to create Trigar, which by the end of it will look like a beautiful mix between these loving creatures that we see on the screen. Yeah. Loving creatures. That's hope. <laughs> yeah. Let's, no pressure at all. I was telling Evan before we started that we're just making him more and more nervous with how we give him <laughs> beasts. Like it started with, hey, man, oh. just think of a cool beast and, and put it out there and don't worry about it. And he did that. And then it was, hey, this kid drew this beast. No pressure. Make it look like it's a part of our world. He's watching. And then Evan did that. And then two weeks ago, we we're like, hey, this um, lady that's paid for this has just wrote out what it looks like. She's watching right now. Please make it to her liking. No pressure. And now we're bringing the person on the Facebook Live to judge every stroke Evan makes. So no pressure, Evan. I, Evan, wow. I, I got to tell you, I know. I, so I used to draw when I was in high school and loved it and thought it was great and wanted to do it did it with my friends. And, um, I can't tell you how difficult it is to do what you're doing. Like I would, I would be copying something cause I was learning how to draw. I'd be copying like a picture of link shooting an arrow. Right. 
and it would take me like you know two months <laughs> to draw something that was i was literally copying not creating out of my mind not doing live on camera so i just want to tell you how appreciative i am of your skill and uh it's really cool well i i, I appreciate that i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't not copying as a as a general means of you know study master studies and things like that have have been a very really a really important part of learning the pedagogy of art for a long long time so it's definitely a critical step i mean it's never something that you want to rely on as a crutch if you're pursuing it you know beyond just for your own personal enjoyment but um it's definitely a really critical step so i wouldn't i wouldn't knock it i i hear what you're saying though i mean what it's, i would what, what i would more my to slowness that. that i was knocking not necessarily <laughs> the copying but i what i was explaining is with the copying was that it wasn't even coming out of my mind and it was still slow so it was just like there's no way i have a future in this i'm just way too, <laughs> too slow <laughs> i try for those of you that are already following Evan and they're like, wow, he's saying words that I haven't heard of before. I'm putting definition on the screen. Pedagogy, oh, a method my. and practice of teaching, especially wow. as an academic subject or theoretical concept. Wow. I'm happy oh, yeah. to talk down for you, Dylan. Is it because I live in Florida, Dylan, that you feel? No, like it's because I live and I know there's some, I live in Port Huron and I know Denise, mom, you're here. You're smarter than me. I, I don't have big words may don't speak big words well um we're gonna we're gonna uh shift it up though over to matt you're from florida matt but i want people to get to know you a little bit just very light where are you where are you born and you're in florida now so what where are you born and what brings you to florida yeah yeah so i would i i live in florida i'm not from florida i wouldn't say which no one in florida is but uh but yeah no so originally from lexington kentucky Go Wildcats, um, featured here on the cup. Uh, so yeah, no, grew up in uh, Wilmore, Kentucky, just outside Lexington and uh, went to a small private college there, Asbury. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, made my way to Florida. I did a, a crazy internship that you did where we sold books door to door, um, 80 hours a week on straight commission. Great idea. Um, nah, <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I did that for a while. And then, um, and then from there, I, I ended up going to uh, Cambodia, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, working with a, an organization, WRP, uh, who you also work for, Dylan. And uh, that's how we, we've gotten to know each other so well. But yeah, I worked there for a year and a half. And uh, my, my wife, now wife at the time, just was curious about you know going to Southeast Asia. And, and we didn't have a project she could come work on, but, um, she was really beautiful and really awesome. And so I wanted to keep talking to her. So I just was like, Hey, do you want to keep zooming? And so we just did, it was Skype back then, but you know, I'm funny. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and you know, one thing led to another and I was like, all right, I'm ready to leave Southeast Asia and come live in Florida where she lived. So that's how I got down here. And I've been here for over a decade and now we've got two kids and, you know, fire pit is about to be there next week. We just got this house. And so, yeah. What part right, of Florida? Yeah. You don't mind me asking. Right on the coast. Huh? Well, I wonder why I'm writing about pirates. Uh, but yeah, just uh, New Smyrna Beach, just south of Daytona. Okay. Evan yep. is from? Miami. Miami. Dylan just spent time oh. in Orlando. All of us. Yeah. So Evan originally from Orlando. All comes back to Florida. All comes back to Florida. Um, Mark, a.k.a. Buster, happy to have you here, man. Uh, we got Matt with us today. If you have any questions on the world, the co-creating uh, process, what it's like now that we're building the team, if you guys are curious, what does that look like? Uh, feel free to let us know. We have young children's books coming down the pipe, and we also have a podcast coming down the pipe from people that are looking to help us create and build this world. But Right now, we're getting to know Matt, who's who's going to create novels for the world of Tales of Bastunia, and he already kind of let it go a little bit that it's going to be pirate novels. You have traveled a bunch, man, so I feel like I understand that the answer to this question, and actually, I know the answer to this next question because you backed our last Kickstarter, but when we think in terms of paths in Bastunia, right, we have three paths. We have the builder path those that create the world of Bastunia, the, those that are, um, they see the world and they say, what can I make of it? 
right? We have the explorer path, those that travel the world of Estonia, those that see the world and they're filled with wonder and they say, how can I understand this? And then we have the defender path, those that protect the people of Bastunia, those that look at the world and say, this is amazing. They're filled with love. And they say, how can I just preserve this gift? What path are you walking down right now? Do you feel Matt, and why? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so I've got the Explorer hat on. Oh, no, I'm really bad at this. Um, yeah, Explorer hat on. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I especially with with writing um and having just two you know being a new father i've got two kids one's a three-year-old and one's a, a one-year-old and um i feel like i'm definitely on the explorer path uh mm. just learning new things as a father and learning new things you know once you become a father, you learn more about yourself than you do about your kids. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I saw my son do something who's three years old last night in defiance of me. And I was like, oh my gosh, when I get defiant, that's exactly what I do. And I was just like dealing with myself. And it was just, you know, one of those, you know, moments. Um, you'll have more of those, Dylan, coming up as, as Keith gets older. But um but yeah, so, you know, th that part, but then also, you know, writing, I, I've, I have been a fiction and story, I, I should say story, I've been a story lover forever, um, mm. just in any format. And I just consume stories. And I feel like we, we just learned so much from them. And I have. Um, and, and I think that the kind of story that you love, and, and like says a lot too, right, uh, of what you're reading. And, and so I, I never thought it was really possible. Like I've always, I've always wanted to create stories, but never really knew what way to do so. And, you know, now, um, now I really see that, you know, writing is possible. And, and part of what you guys have done is, has inspired me to be like, you know what, I, I really want to, you know, go full in and, and write my own books and create my own stories and, um, so that's, that's a very new thing for me. I have no idea yeah. how to do it and I'm excited. I'm getting coached on it. And, <laughs> you know, I think that's a, I want to come back to like how you find exploring or exploration through writing. I think that's one thing that you just said. That's important of, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing when I start. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing still. Um, and I think a lot of people feel like you have to know exactly what you're going to write and exactly what it's going to look like and exactly what it's going to turn into before they get started creating in general. And I think it's the biggest thing that gets in people's way. So it, if it's something when you're watching this and you're like, man, I always have had it in my heart to create, but you're nervous of the first step, especially feels like to get made fun of in the first step or to deal with potential ridicule in the first step, man, biggest thing is just get started and you figure it out later. And when you have a team, and one of the things we'll talk about today, Matt, is like we help each other. Like you have people to bounce ideas off of. We love to create uh, C.S. Lewis and I'm trying to and Tolkien used to bounce ideas off of each other at Oxford. They were That's in a, a group called the Inklings. So it's like having this community um, is, is important. That being said, small pin, because I'd be curious here of, like you said, as a dad is where you really like this explorer path has opened up. We're all dads here, and I'd be curious how each of us view this. Evan, time for you to get a question. You're a dad. Uh, I am. Is two. that the question? Yeah. Are you a dad? <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> no, you're a dad of two. What path do you feel you're walking right now, and what path do you feel like <laughs> the kids bring out in you? I'm walking right now. I'm not putting you in a box, Evan. Yeah, what path yeah, yeah. do you feel like you're walking? Uh, okay. So as far as the kids go, I mean, the, the explore definitely makes a lot of sense and resonates with me, but I'm at a point in my life where, um, act activism is pay is playing a really large part of my day to day. Um, and some things that I feel very passionate about. And I feel like, like that plays very well into the defender path. Hmm. Hmm. Does your, so, and if anyone yeah. here, um, Evan's activism, which I was talking about this, last week when I was at my offsite is uh, big time against how how quickly AI is progressing and like corners it's cutting and really taking creative freedoms away from or taking yeah creative freedoms and creative ownership away from the people that have put their heart and soul into creating something like we're seeing here today. Um, it's something that he's very passionate about. Do you, would you say then also part of being a dad 
puts you on that path? Or is it more just you have such a passion for defending the rights of these creatives that you're on that path? Um, both. I mean, definitely being a dad is a bit of a conflicting influence here because I should be doing the responsible thing and not endangering my career, um, which I, I, I may in fact be doing. Um, but at the same time, like, like the reason why I do much of it is um, because I don't want this model of um, just data violation and, and these plagiaristic mental models that are coming out of this whole movement to be a part of my kids' futures in that way. Mm. And then, you know, it's going to be on me to shape them to be critical of anything that they, um, that, that they approach, anything that they lean on, anything that they use, just to be open and critical in general. But at the mm. same time, it, it's harder and harder to like try keeping your kids off social media these days. It's not really possible done um <laughs> 12, 12 weeks old doesn't even know it know what it is that's uh that that in particular is not my goal but it's <laughs> it's it's i mean it as an example of yeah. um just one of the challenges of the, the the spaces digital and otherwise that we will not have any kind of agency over with regards to our kids mm. as they grow and and this is an essential one and one that i think is particularly dangerous at the 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 early stages of a craft um, and really just allow people to further take advantage of or devalue a lot of the creative work that, uh, you know, is, is at the core of our collective cultural zeitgeist. Yeah. Hold on one second. I'll get it up. Don't worry about it as I start answering this. <laughs> Hold on. Z guys. Okay. I got this. I got this. Like uh, no, because I, I do find if anyone here does have questions as well, feel free to ask. As you can tell, uh, we are just chatting and asking each other questions until we hear something. Anyone wants to know what a zeitgeist is, the defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and the beliefs of the time. Uh, we're learning every day. The reason I ask the question, though, is everyone is going to be a parent inside of Bastunia, right? Every like, There's going to be a bunch of different types of teachers inside of Bastunia. I've had questions in the past as we're building this of like, what would a teacher be? Would it be a defender path or a builder path and an explorer path? And my answer to that is, well, it really depends how they view teaching, right? And we're getting this in the same way of how you all, you both view fatherhood in a sense, right? Um, wanting to protect the future of your kid versus seeing the childlike wonder that your child might have and being like, oh my gosh, this is tapping me into understanding myself more. Um, so I think that's the cool part about this. When we're creating, when we're talking about these paths, when people are creating their callings, we're not saying this is your identity. Uh, I just did recently did a reel on this. It's like, this is just where you currently find meaning for your life. So it's cool to hear both of it from you. Um, Matt, I'm curious because he's getting to the head. When you think of a feline for Trigar, are we thinking more tiger are we thinking more lion? Are we thinking more leopard? Are we thinking none of them? Yeah. I mean, I was thinking more kind of like jaguar, like maybe tiger jaguar, like, uh, jaguar. you know, a, a, a cat that loves the water. Right. Huh? And also something that, you know, blends in really well. And uh, yeah. Evan, it just blows my mind how quick you can come up with these. I've already started to create my defender calling and my builder calling to send over to Evan and be like, hey, if you have any free time in your paternity leave, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> um, but Evan currently is making this beast for Matt because, Matt, currently you want to work on a series of books that have a pirate theme within uh, Bastunia, right? So they would, take, they would take place on the infant sea and really on the infant coast. Yeah, so, and I would say even more like a yes, pirate theme, but also more like explorer theme is mm. really the bigger picture. It's like explorer themed. Do you want to give us? I know we're still early in the stages, but what is a light premise of these books that you're creating? And if, as Matt's explaining this, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, Buster said that he'd be a defender path because he defensively is sound in hockey, which is huge lie doesn't back check at all if you're watching 
As the goalie, I think you would know. I promise you this guy is not a defender. Um, but <laughs> Matt, <laughs> no worries. Matt, that like a premise. troll. That seemed like a, a huge a troll. troll, man. He's here to <laughs> troll, and that's it. And we love you for it. Matt, light premise of these books or what, what it is you want to show in these books that you're working on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. This is, I, like you're finally asking me like a real question. I'm like, Ooh, okay. Now I've got a, I've got to answer. Got so two. yeah, I mean, I think the, the kind of overall premise is, is really geared towards um, is a, a calling of exploring, like exploring mm -hmm. callings and exploring like what, what does that calling actually mean in your life? And there's, there's a kind of a lot of roots to the calling, but there are some that are not like favorable to, you know, living a, a life of, you know, happiness and peace. Right. And so what does that pursuit, the end pursuit of those callings, like where does that end people up? If that makes sense. And in particularly around exploring. And mm -hmm. so I want to, I want to kind of go into a different, a couple of different ways of people who are exploring uh, different things and, and kind of where that leads them. And uh, it's going to be, but it's going to be fun and it's going to be action packed. So it, it's like, think of like, you know, and, and I, I got kind of inspiration because I freaking loved like originally the pirates of the Caribbean, like the original. And I love like ocean and water. And I feel like they just kind of threw that series to the, the wind and it, it was terrible. And, but I feel like there's a lot that could be done with that. Um, and I feel like, you know, just exploring, uh, exploring Bastunia would be fun. Yeah. So kind of show, talking about Pirates of the Caribbean at first, like what was your initial, do you recall an initial moment when you're like, I want to write? I mean, cause you've been, you've traveled, you, you've, like you said, college, you've traveled around the country selling books door to door. You're in Cambodia. You've traveled to Africa. You came back and moved to Florida. It's like, you've experienced a lot. Where in that journey were you like, you know what? I can see myself writing a book. Man, that's a great question. I all of probably, probably, I would say when I lived in Cambodia, when I lived in Southeast Asia, at one point sitting on a beach in Thailand, I was like, man, if I could just like write stuff from this computer and sit here all day, you know, and go out down to the beach and come back like that would be pretty awesome. I think I would enjoy doing that. And so I had no idea what I was going to write. And I, at that point, I don't even think it was books. I thought I was going to be like, you know, doing a travel kind of blog or something like that is what I was thinking probably. Mm. And so, but I remember thinking like, man, I would love to just like eat awesome Thai food, sit here, look at the beautiful ocean and, and write and make money. Uh, so, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's where I was, I, I was kind of a, you know, and I, I feel like at the time kind of a childish view of it. Right. You know, it's kind of like a simplistic view of like, Oh, wouldn't this be great if I could just do this forever. And you know, not if only I could just write and make a bunch of money, life would be awesome. Sitting on the where, beach. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. you know, that's, that's where all first Im imaginations come from. But I, I mean, I think it refined over time because at the time I was thinking about writing a book on like a nonfiction book on what I was doing and the consulting that I was doing. Um, and, and then, you know, that kind of went away when I decided not to do consulting anymore. And then, you know, as we started talking, I think, honestly, Dylan, our conversations about like, you know, your book and, and thinking about writing really was like, oh, my gosh, like somebody I know is actually writing fiction. And and that was kind of like a first conversation. We've been in conversation for years about writing. So. Yeah, so it's like one one person taking that step, and you're like, you know what? Maybe I, I write more fiction and being a little bit drawn toward. I know you have you're a huge Brandon Sanderson fan, like you say, Pirates of the Caribbean fan. I am wondering if we have a troll as well talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean and One Piece. I will not say anything towards it. I am going to hide any emotion right now. Uh, we appreciate your. Uh, know, as soon as I said Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm like, oh man, people are going to be like, that's what you're. You know, the, like, they said uh, it inspires One Piece, but uh, One Piece started a decade before it, more than a decade before it. Uh, when was it that you decided that you wanted to write within Bastunia? 
right? Because I think there's there's probably some good and and toughness that or bad that comes with it. One is there's a world here that you can see and and, and picture, but also trying to fit within this plot and this world and this direction that we're heading. What was it that you're like, you know what? I want to actually write within this world of Bastunia. Yeah, good question. Um, I, I would say, I mean, you know, being a part of the Kickstarter and like being a part of the journey with you guys from the beginning. And I think one of the biggest things, and I've, I've been in like, not in collaboration groups, like serious, serious, but I've been with other storytellers and, been like oh man i really like what you're writing and like you know had really good conversations with them and gotten into a place where you know and i I think i said something of this on one of our other videos that we were talking about but like where there's just resistance there's tension when you're like ooh, a suggestion and it's kind of like brainstorming you know and it's not that they have it plotted out but it's like there's this resistance and with you and Matt, I just, I didn't feel resistance. I I felt input and sure there was resistance at times, but it was this good kind of tension of like, Ooh, well, this is why we wouldn't do that. I'm like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. And, and just, you know, taking feedback from me and seeing it applied and being like, Oh, wow. Like my, you know, my, my perspective actually matters here. And like, I can, I can get on board with what you guys are doing. And if you guys can get on board with, you know, what I'm thinking and that matters, then awesome. Like, that's what I want. Like, I, I like working in a team. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you say that. Cause it's one of the things we talked about on Wednesday and before I, I, I tap on it, Hey, I, I admit that I'm wrong. I did not know Oda was, Oda had mentioned this in an interview before how, how pirates of the Caribbean helped him have more information about pirates to give it more flavor. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Oda coming from Japan and then seeing pirates of the Caribbean and everything that it did. Uh, we have another question from Caesar, which we're going to get to in a second here. Um, But having somebody join. So what I'm hearing from you is like being able to join and almost co-create with someone is something it's something that actually excited you. Right. We can bounce ideas off of each other. I think one of the biggest challenges that can come with it, which we kind of hit on Wednesday, is we're heading in this direction. Right. And then it's like bringing on another potential idea to this. And the biggest thing we want to make sure that we're being aware of is potential plot holes. We got to think of a timeline here. We got to think of when your characters come into play. Uh, we got to think of the characters we've already put into play and like, how can we make all of this work together? What's up, Spencer? Um, it can be difficult. I think it can be really, really difficult. And the, what I've learned through it is uh, like the power of taking a big breath. Because like, as soon as something comes up, we had a timeline, little small debacle on, on Wednesday with like Rory's age, one of your characters and what we're talking about in book two. And I remember it first mm-hmm. hit me and it's like, you instantly get tight and you're like, holy crap, this is a plot hole. People are going to like, I'm, we're going to get ridiculed for it. People are going to troll us. I know Buster's going to be watching and he's going to, he's going to say, what about this, this, and this. And it's like, you want to get tight, but it's like when we're, we give ourselves a chance to breathe into it we can really be like, okay, how do, how could this work? And I remember we got off that call and you had messaged us like 15 minutes later and you're like, actually, let's switch this up, this up, and this up. And it just made sense. Um, so yeah, like co-creating can be super difficult, but I think super worth it when you can like find those, uh, find those outs, find those tunnels of like, well, what if we go this way? Especially being very proactive with it like doing it on the front end. Um, so yep. all of that to say, if you're looking to get started in, in creative process and you're looking to co-create, you're getting nervous about the plot points and things like that. I think the biggest part is breathe through it and be as proactive as possible, right? Because you haven't started writing your book yet. Um, question coming in from Caesar, Man, Caesar, I'm pretty sure you found us on TikTok. So not someone from one of our followings randomly followed us on TikTok, picked up the first book, picked up the second book. Now we're friends on Facebook, I believe Instagram as well. What in what inspirations do you all have? Matt, let's go Matt as an author. What inspiration do you have? 
I'll try to go as like a plotter or a world builder. And then Evan, I'd love to know inspirations you have from an illustration, an illustrator standpoint. Okie doke. You totally stole my plotting and world building. Uh, you can do that one too if you like. Go ahead. Um, no, no, it's good. Uh, so inspirations. What inspirations do I have? Um, I, I think a, a couple of big ones. The biggest one would be Brandon Sanderson. Uh, when I read Mistborn, I was like, Phew. and I was like, okay, this is this is the kind of fantasy that I really can appreciate. And um, and so. He's a big inspiration. And also what's inspiring about Brandon, I think more than anything is just his work ethic. Like he is a workhorse and he is like, he, he plots everything out and is thinking so far ahead. And I, I don't think some of his, I think some of his comedy is not so great. And I'm like, man, I could write better comedy than him and things like that. But I just appreciate his like long-term vision of like, taking something from here and spreading it out with the plots of all of his books that all like, you know, work together. And then like eventually, and I'm confident he can do this is bring it back to kind of a point. And so that kind of ability to, to do that is awesome. So that's inspiring uh, as far as writing goes. And just, I, I love thinking on that scale, the scale that he, he thinks on. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Actually, as I continue to think, because I am not like a huge reader, right? I'm more of just like, I want to write. Um, Evan, what inspirations do you have when it comes to illustrating? Because you do Ninja. seem to have a, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, an American style animation feel. But I'd be curious of, is that, do you have an inspiration from it or is it someplace else? Yeah, but very much so. I mean, I, I, I would call it Western style as opposed to American specifically. A lot of it is inspired by a lot of French animation, um, which is a France has a really robust animation um, school, not literal school, but school of experience. Anyway, um, so yeah, I would call it Western animation style or aesthetic um, in contrast to say Japanese animation, which I know is what you're more drawn to, Dylan. Mm -hmm. um, for specific <laughs> inspirations, I have a list as long as my leg for sure. Um, and, you know, ask me on a different day and I'm likely to give a different answer. But um, a lot of my favorites are going to be like the the Night Old Men of Walt Disney animation. They're the ones who um, really pioneered a lot of the 12 principles of animation and that that whole illusion of life philosophy behind uh, what makes Western animation as we know it so um, successful and appealing in its own way and achieving its its specific goals. Um, but m m more relatably, painters like John Singer Sargent, the Golden Age illustrators like Norman Rockwell, N.C. Wyeth, Mead Schaefer, Howard Pyle are all fantastic inspirations of mine. More contemporary, there's a company called Creature Box that um, Dave Guerton being one of them, they specialize in, in like Jack and Daxter kind of character design and creature mm -hmm. design, and, and they're fantastic. Um, pl plenty of comic artists. Um, someone like Wiley Beckert is always an inspiration I come back to. I'd recommend her work to absolutely anybody. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a list I could, I could really go on forever with. Uh, I'm going to try not to, but that's, that, that's very much where it comes from. A lot of the old uh, animators of the characters that we all know and love, like Andreas Deja, he did, uh, you know, Scar and um jafar and was responsible for a lot of the the disney villains a lot of the work on lilo and stitch that they're they're big inspirations of mine man my answer is going to sound so dumb just because it's like you guys have both you, got, you have clear inspirations of authors that like have played a big part in your life or illustrators that played a big part in your life for me i think more of the concept of frameworks so I think a big inspiration for me is the first time I played Dungeons and Dragons. So it's not an author, Caesar. I'm sorry. I'll give a little bit different of an answer here. But this, this concept of like creating a loose world and then creating frameworks of uh, races and classes and powers and a power system that you can tap into and giving me the freedom to be like, oh, 
do I want to be more like this or more like this? And if I was a elf, I'm probably going to have a different background than if I was a dragonborn. And if I'm a druid, I'm going to definitely have a different background than if I'm a ranger. So it's like just that small question that then for me sparks my imagination and creativity to come in. I love what Dungeons and Dragons um, has created in a sense um, of that. I would say my first like stories that taught me something, it would be more of like Evan says, Eastern style. Everyone grew up with Pokemon. I was a huge Digimon fan. I loved like the one, and it's a big inspiration I had with calling, but like having one Digimon, Digidestin, that was related to a value, you know, love, hope, courage, friendship, responsibility, all of that stuff. It just, I, I, that got me going of like, man, I could see myself like this. What would my value be? Um, so I think those just landed really good frameworks for me. I'm a huge Horikoshi fan. I love Horikoshi Koi for uh, My Hero Academia. I know a lot of people hate on them, but I just love the story that they built and how they intertwine uh, characters and build up these side characters into people that are, they have like, some people are a huge uh, secondary character fan. They absolutely love Bakugo instead of the main character of Deku. Some people love Karishima. It's just, they did such a good job building up side characters which is what I really aim and hope to do through the world of Bastunia as well. We're going to see Joan and Artie on their main destination, their main A story. But we're then going to start to see other characters rise up. We're going to see the, what James has to say in the main story. We're going to meet people from James's past, people like Andal, people like Keelan, uh, people like Rory. Uh, in Matt's book. So I'm excited to have side characters really color the world um, of Bastunia. Great question, Caesar. Thank you for asking. If you have any other questions, feel free to throw it in the chat. We have another 18 minutes here finishing up our uh, beast creation for Matt. Trigar is who we're working on. Evan, any questions for Matt as you continue to draw this? I am struggling with a feline centric feline leaning shark informed they i mean as you can see I'm, I'm leaning pretty heavily on the shark aspect mm -hmm. of that and i am struggling to find like a balance between feline and shark that is working for me i mean i don't know what's working for you and feel free <laughs> to tell me yeah, um yeah. and as we're as we're working through it any this is this will be the first time Evan gets edits on the spot and we'll see how he yeah, does. Just can't, let's th <laughs> constantly throw different balls at Evan to juggle. Matt, what's hidden yeah. for you? Because we get to really experience what the editing process is like. What do we like? What would be slight changes that we'd want to make here? Yeah, I mean, overall, love the the drawing. I not what I was picturing for Trigar, but actually another character. I'm like, this is their beast. This is awesome. So, but I think, I think the, I, I love, I'm, I'm seeing your, your challenge with the cat, you know, in the bottom left corner. I think that that bottom left one is probably closer, but I'm wondering if maybe, maybe I'm thinking like cat base with shark add-ons, you know, or something like that, where, it's it's not so much like the face isn't shark you know it's it's mm -hmm. more it's more teeth might somehow be sharkish but it's more cat face with like you know a cat body slash kind of molding into a shark at the end uh, something like that um which is is definitely different than than what you're you're drawing but i also really love this drawing and i know exactly who i would love like <laughs> more on this side for so um it's definitely good um, so more cat so more cat towards shark head and then more cat towards shark body do we like the tail i'm gonna ask you questions yeah. i would ask other people that yeah I, I like the tail i'm thinking kind of probably more of like a i don't know what kind of shark has like the kind of longer like slooping tail if that makes sense on the end um okay um what is this name? uh treasure shark or thresher shark for those that don't Probably. know really long holy crap long tail 
It's like a separate body. Like a yeah. As we continue, Matt will look up what edits he wants. <laughs> uh, for those that are tapping in now, uh, we're starting to build out uh, the world of Bastunia. And with it, we're building out creators that want to be tapped into a world like this. Matt is currently working on a series of novels um, that will take more of a pirate and explorer feel in the world of Bastunia. So it will take place on the Infin Coast, the Infin Sea Coast, and it will hopefully continue to branch out um, past that. So a light premise is, for those that don't know, in Bastunia, we're not at a point, right, where people are venturing to far distances in the world of Bastunia. James Daniels, Jones' dad, is the biggest explorer in this world. And he's really focusing his efforts and his energy towards uh, the Great Mountain. He's a climber. He's got a pilot beast, but he likes to climb. He likes to venture upwards, right? So when the god goes missing in Bastunia, one of the things that James says is, I think he's, I don't think he's lost. I think he's missing and we need to, I don't think he's gone. I think he's missing and we need to find him. And James gets a group of comrades to really see if they can get to the top of the great mountain. But other people in Bastunia start to say, hey, it doesn't have to be at the top of the mountain. What if it's um, in the middle of the sand sea? No one goes super far south in the world of Bastunia into this great desert. There's a chance that God got lost there. We haven't explored that place yet. And other people say, hey, what if he's out in the water? What if he's out in the depths of this great ocean? What if he's under the sea? Um, at this time in Bastunia's history, we don't have these large ships like Oda would imagine or Pirates of the Caribbean would imagine. We have kind of these small ships that keep close to the coast. They have no reason to venture out past the coast. And nothing has been built yet by a beast to allow travel out there um, until a certain human uh, gets a beast that allows him uh, to create a blueprint or a prototype for a great, uh, a great ship to take out on the infancy. And he works on that for years and, and says, Hey, I really think I'm getting to a point where, I can, I can take this and, and we can potentially venture out past the shoreline into the great depths of this raging ocean that is the infant sea. And that person, Matt, I know I'm speaking for you, but that person happens yeah. to be the dad of the main character of the books Matt is creating. And um, as he does this, he gets befriended by another man who has kind of a off and on past of, of good and bad. He's, he was a, he's a pirate for a while. He could, becomes good for a while. And he kind of goes back and forth of, is this a good guy? Is this a bad guy? I get Loki vibes from him. Maybe a little bit more yeah. leaning to That's, good guy. But yeah. when you're like, who is this? Is this guy, should I be rooting for him? Should I be rooting against him? A man named Rory Zanthari. Zanthari? Yeah. Bef befriends this man and uh, learns of the prototype uh, to create this. And he he starts to uh, tell people that he could find the, the lost God in the infancy due to these, these ship blueprints, um, which leads to a lot of challenges, right? Because when you start to let the general public know that you have the blueprints of the prototypes, for a new machine that can travel great distances in Bastunia, you're going to pique the interest of pretty much everybody. Um, everybody in a good way and also everybody in a bad way. So from there, Matt, I'd love for you to like, where are we at when your books start in the world of Bastunia. I try to do my best to like lead up to where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Um, so not not fully decided that yet, actually, but I'm I'm imagining where we're gonna come into the story is uh, Rory actually coming back from having taken out this prototype. 
um, mm. to the ocean and, and having in some ways succeeded, uh, not not succeeded in finding the God, which was kind of the big mission, but also not coming back empty handed um, because he, they've now traveled the ocean and, and he did not just travel the ocean and come right back because he landed somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so there's going to be some that's going to be story to come in, in future pacing and there, we're going to find out what that looks like but he's coming back but he's also coming back to a situation that has changed since he's gone he's been gone for a couple of years and mm. and now um and, and now the main character zara and her family who has built this prototype that it's come back they've actually also advanced the prototype since when rory took it out and now they've got kind of a new a new form and now all of a sudden that he the inventors of the ship aren't really needed anymore and that's kind of the inciting incident is like this this grab over this ability to go travel across the sea because you know there people are wanting resources it's it's kind of a entrepreneurial hey whoever can go out to the sea and get the resources and and conquer land that's going to be important and so that kind of there's a lot of power struggles that come from that so yeah it reminds me of like it's the bastunian gold rush in a sense yeah because bastunia is also in a sense for anyone uh curious of the world of bastunia bastunia is in, in a kind of a very fragile place right for the longest time people were born with callings those callings represent what you're supposed to do in this world what's your place in this world and they kind of provided a sense of order um and then 16, 15, 16 years ago, the God that grants these callings goes missing and people start being born without callings and there's a bit of chaos going and people are wondering if they're ever going to be born with a calling and what is life like after callings and you're going to have people that want to take advantage of this chaos moment, right? At the same time, what's going on is the currency in Bastunia, which is actually minerals that are mined throughout Bastunia, this currency, these minerals are starting to dry up. So now you have this economic uh, potential crumbling or economic collapse that's going to happen within Bastunia. And Bastunia needs to find a way to get more of these minerals. And one of the questions are, where are we not looking for minerals? Where are we not looking for these resources? And one of the first thoughts is the uh, the infant sea, the ocean that we have. What if we start mining further out? We just need to have the right um, uh, we need to have the right machinery. We need to have the right uh, beasts. We need to have the right people that can go look for this. So this prototype is seen as an opportunity for that. Um, I'm super excited to see because we have not touched the infant sea in uh, any of our plotting, really. So I'm super excited to see what you can add to it, Matt. Um, yeah, man, and I'm, just, I'm really excited this is something uh, you decided to act on. And I guess that would be one of my last questions here. And if you have any, any questions, feel free to ask it in the, uh, in the chat. We'll make sure we answer them. Uh, we're gonna finish up here in probably the next five to, to seven minutes. I'll let you think on this, Matt, but the question is like, any words of inspiration or words of encouragement to that person that is thinking of getting started creating, but not taking that first step, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, and this is part of why I'm, I'm writing an explorer story is like, you know, explorers don't know what they're going to get into. Like you don't know, you try and prepare as best you can, but like at the end of the day, you just have to explore, right? <laughs> you just have to go and, and be kind of prepared for being unprepared, right? And, and being able to deal with it. And I think that in the creative process, there's such a fear of like, ooh, I don't know what, you know, I don't know where I'm going to, this is going to end me up. Am I going to look like a fool? You know, am I going to look... Okay, you know, especially with writing, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about magical beasts, right? And mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're, you know, middle aged men, right? So it's like, what, you know, what are we doing? But it's like, no, we're, we're doing this because yeah, we want to, we believe that we love these stories, and we love the way that they, you know, influence young kids and, and the way that they're thinking and, and creativity. And so it's like, but you're, 
you know, are we going to look stupid doing it? Maybe to some people, but you know, who cares? It, it's like, if you, if you let that hold you back, then you'll never get outside of the, the current world you live in. And I think that, you know, that's the kind of explore thing to do. It's like, go take action. And so I, I just encourage you, if you're thinking about writing, you're thinking about doing it, like take action, take the next step, whatever that is, you know, when, for me, it was like really committing and, and it was like making this like, not just me, but like, I'm going to let everyone know I'm writing a book and this is the book I'm writing. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm going to wait until I finish the book to do it. Well, no, now I'm, I'm live right now. Like I've got pressure. Like I, if I don't write this book, like, <laughs> you know, like I am not who I say I am. And so mm -hmm. I think that, you know, there's a good sense of pressure when you're able to give yourself some accountability and some like, yeah, I've got to follow through with what I say I'm going to do. So I would just encourage you to get get the positive side of that, you know, not, not bad pressure, but good pressure. Yeah. No, I think it's like until I started doing reels or until I started talking about this to people, it was more of just like a, this would be nice to do one day. Right. And I think if Someday. a lot of people say that for a really long period of time. So um, I think the other part is like, we're, we're open, we're welcoming uh, having an in and not feeling like you have to, to write this on your own and like, what are yeah. the frameworks? I just spoke with someone today for coffee. Shout out Al if you're watching. Is um, he's like, man, I always feel like I, I I can I can say so much, and I feel like I do have a story in me. He's just, I just don't know how to do it, or I'm not a good writer. And I told him, I'm like, hey man, um, I don't write for Tales of Bastunia. Um, I don't draw for Tales of Bastunia. I just like I I just plot, and I think having those frameworks is where I can find my my niche it's i think a lot of times people just need help of what's the framework for a good fantasy story what's the framework for a good children's story it's that's our background um th three of us now matt matt and dylan have a background in self-publishing and teaching people how to self-publish and understand more of those frameworks and we learn by doing so um yeah, man, I, I can't agree more. Just just getting started because it gives you that internal pressure of like, I told people I'd do this. Yep. Love it. Love it. Um, any question, any questions you have? I really like the shift up that you have. This feels a lot more feline. Uh, yeah, Evan. this is this is yeah, this is good. I, I want to see the whole shade. I, I love your last process of when you start like shading or doing whatever that is. Um, and for okay. any of those, <laughs> I'm on it. Those, thank you so much. Uh, any of those that are curious, where can I find this when it's done? Feel free to follow us on Instagram, Unfound Adventures on Instagram, Unfound Adventures on TikTok. And then obviously we have our public and private Facebook groups, Unfound Adventures public page. Feel free, come ask questions. Tell us what you're working on when you're creating. Tell us what ideas you might have for our world because I can't say we take all of them and you can ask Matt that as we don't take all the ideas he has. I don't. But, and it's but, to uh, detriment, but they don't. <laughs> but we will take some. Uh, we take a lot too because it, it is a, it's again, kind of coming back to Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it's enough depth, but it's also simple enough where we can we can have that flexibility and adaptability to story um so that's really why i wanted to have you here man matt i mean do you have any questions for us as we finish up as as evan does final shadings here and turns your beast gray um i should i should probably know this but when does when does book three come out Great question, Evan. When do you think? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I I am visioning. It's probably I, <laughs> Dylan like, paid me to say this. By the way, yeah. Evan, just mm -hmm. I, don't know. I don't doubt it. I uh, honestly, Evan, your God is watching. I have been a lot less pressury since having a kid. Of when is the next book out? Yes, this is true. This okay. is true. Still, still pressury, but less pressury. Um, no, Evan is actually doing. Uh, during his paternity leave, he is uh, he's doing kind of the rough sketches of book three. And once yeah. once Evan does. So basically what happens is I horribly um, storyboard these with my figures that Evan will not show. And then from my horrible storyboard, I'll lightly plot what's happening in each panel. And I send that to Evan and he turns those into a rough sketch and he sends those rough sketches to us. 
And um, so that's kind of where we're at right now for book three. Once he's come on, dude, I can demo it. I can demo it. Oh, I thought you were gonna... I was I was gonna actually gonna say you know in a fun way we should sometime do this reverse Evan where you're interviewing you know Matt while Dylan draws or something like that you know I'm... and actually a very good idea and I wouldn't I I would be fine getting made fun of as I do this but I would have to like. Evan is good enough where I can like make jokes and kind of talk to him. And sometimes when I'm locked in, uh, I might locked, not be able to get questions locked into your stick figures, locked into my <laughs> stick figures. Cause in my mind, what happens in my mind, what happens is I have to figure out what type of panel for where we're at in this plot. Like how many, how many panels could I get to fit this one page? Cause you can't do too much. You can't do too little. And then what's in each panel? And I'll literally, when I storyboard, I'll I'll draw the, uh, I'll draw the like the talk bubbles and what they're saying. I go a little bit too far in depth. I like really think I'm good at it too. Uh, Evan, though, you're kind of showing what this looks like uh, from start to finish. Yes. Well, I don't I don't actually have the original loose sketches in this file, but. Thank um... God. <laughs> So it starts at a very new sketch phase, today. and then we then we add in the line work, and then the the grayscale. There's there's a lot of different back and forth in the process of uh, bringing it together. Um, but you know what I can do is next time I can have every stage of that process ready to go, so we can we can walk including through it. mine, especially the first stage, especially especially the very first. Yes. Let's see if I can find it, just so people can laugh at me. Awesome. Uh, chapter seven yeah, storyboard. Cool. Look at that. A Zigra coming up in chapter seven. That's Artie. That's Joan looking at James. You're slowly figuring out what's to come in four chapters from now. I know. I'm very talented. Never said yeah. you weren't. Very, very talented. Talented at something. That's for sure. You know, the sad part is I will do draw my stick figures and like I'll be drawn an emotional scene. And I'm drawing my stick figures and I'm like getting choked up. And then I look at what I drew. I'm like, why is this making me cry? It's a horrible <laughs> stick figure. Um, but I have that ability to pull that emotion out, even in stick figures. Um, that being said, I'm looking at time. Thank you so much to everyone that joined us this week. We changed it up a little yeah. bit. We, we, we brought in a new creator. Matt, thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah. You will be good. You are Cuthbert for for um for everything other, moving forward yeah for Wait, without without forward. when matt's not here i'll i'll just put matt sites when matt's here i'll put cuthbert Keith, cuthbert yes uh thank you so much man for joining us thank you so much for telling us a little bit about your world thank you like seriously and this is a big one for anyone that's watching man thank you so much for being vulnerably you um to talk about what you want to create right because in the beginning it's like we are learning as we go um so i really commend that and i appreciate it man and same to Evan, like you are really being vulnerable with, Hey, what are your thoughts? Let me draw this for someone. And they're watching everything I do. Uh, so Evan, I know you're not an emotional guy, but I really appreciate you, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and something that's not like normal. <laughs> like I totally threw through a tough cookie. Yeah. Even I love this. Yeah, this, was, this was a fun one. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for anyone. Uh, we will see you in two weeks where we will do more Great. beast drawings and Evan might um, in this time do a couple of side beast drawings that we put on our Instagram. Make sure you're following us there. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see everyone in the next live stream. We love you guys.